So uh, we're going to start today with the uh, mixing station overview. Uh, you know, we need water before we do anything else, so uh, let's talk about that. Uh, you can see up here I've got two tanks. Uh, most people tend to go with the uh, vertical tanks. Uh, I needed to maximize uh, floor space. So I found these guys locally and that fit the bill. Um, I found a commercial grade boatless shelving unit. Uh, which is, I know it's going to stand up. The, the shelves are rated for like, I don't know, 2,000 pounds or, or more. So um, that that's, which is perfect. Uh, you can't get these at Home Depot. I don't know what the Home Depot ones are rated for. Uh, I've seen them there. Uh, but what I did is I called around, found a uh, commercial shelving place. Uh, I was able to talk to the guys. And, uh, get load ratings and uh, they set up a system for exactly what I wanted, you know, exact size and number of shells and height and all that. So that, that worked pretty good. Um, the containers I got at Tractor Supply, uh, which isn't far from me, and um, I got two, they're 65 gallons a piece. Uh, the top one is fresh water and the bottom one is salt water. Um, the top one gets filled by the road eye unit. I've got uh, the road eye units down here, and I run the water line up to the top of this container here. Uh, inside is a float valve that's connected to the quarter inch water line uh, with a John Guest fitting. That fills up and it automatically cuts off the road eye units when it's done. Um, so then, when it's time to make the salt water, all I can do is come over here and turn this valve. Uh, which I actually need to do today. Uh, and that'll start dropping water down and into the bottom. Uh, but to help that along, I've got the Eheim 1260 pump here. And all I gotta do is come over here, flip on this switch, and this will start pouring water. And, you know, it's, it's basically sucking it down, sending it through the pump, back up here, and into the top of the tank. So what I can do then is while that's filling, I could just open up my salt container, take the cover off, and just start scooping in salt. Uh, when that gets up to, you know, around 50, 60 gallons in this tank, then all I do is just come back over here, turn this back to off, and let the pump continue, because now the pump's just going to be sucking water out of this tank, through the pump, and back in, so it's just, you know, constant cycle, and it's just mixing the salt water. Uh, you know, I let that run for uh, around 24 hours or so. Uh, each salt manufacturer will have a different recommendation for how long you should mix their salt. Uh, you mix it too long, you have chances of precipitation. Um, you get that gunk uh, collecting around the walls of your, your mixing container. So uh, I you know, try, to, try to remember to come out here in about 24 hours and turn that off. So, um, other than that, the uh, other cool thing about the way this is set up is I've got an extra outlet here on the pump, so if I need to fill up a container, uh, you know, to take to work from my Nano, or uh, if I just need to, you know, throw some extra salt water or fresh water real quick into the sump, I can do that. Again, I can either just, like, gravity do the work by turning the dial, or I can start the pump and that'll, you know, that'll push it in. And um, as far as getting uh, the salt water to my tank, I've got an uh, auto water change system, uh, which I guess I'll go over it in another video, but when that's running, there, there's a pump I've got in here. That's what this line is right here, this water line. So at the, at the bottom of the container is the pump for that. So when the Proflux computer tells the, uh, the whole water change thing to start, It'll first suck the water out of my tank, and then when it's ready to pump it back in, it turns on this pump in here, and just I've got the water line running to the sump, and it'll just pump it until it's filled. Uh, so let me give you a little bit of a close-up uh, view of some of the plumbing here. Uh, some people were asking, kind of you know, how I had it plumb. So let's do that real quick. So as you can see right here, here's the got the Eheim. 1260 and just uh, you know 
bulkheads coming out of the tank, ball valves, pretty simple. You know, because I've got the pump centered, you know, straight, just this pretty much straight pipe straight out to the pump, uh, when I come up and come over, I had to actually go around the uh, drop I had from the fresh water tank. And then, uh, you know, it just comes in here, and I had just drilled uh, another hole in the top here and uh, threw in one of these little slip bulkheads. And that's fine because, you know, the water never comes up this high anyway. So as long as the water can go down inside, then we're good. Around here. You know, this here, I don't know, I just figured if I ever needed to to get water out another way, if I, you know, it's just an extra quarter inch water line hookup. And actually speaking of that, sometimes I need road eye water to uh, dilute something or uh, fill up my sprayer for the, um, for the mangrove plants. I usually spray them with road eye. So, uh, in order to do that, I've just got an extra little water line right here. It's just coming out with a, just a little ball valve. And it's just, this just dangles. And it's just the end of the uh, tubing. So I can just stick this tubing inside of any, you know, any little container. Fill it up real quick. And up top there, you can see the very top, that's where the road eye comes in. And I had to label them, you know, just in case I forget which is which. It could happen. Until the next installment, thanks for checking in. I'll see you later.